The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the people from, his, from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. That was a test, and you all just failed it. That was our liturgical purity test, and it is not Christmas yet, actually. Um, and thank goodness, I should say, thank goodness it's not Christmas yet, because I still have a lot of shopping to do. Um, let me give you a little clue about what I'm getting my wife Kirsten for Christmas this year. It is whatever is left over at Target. <laughs> just kidding, it was a joke, it was a joke. No, I, I am kidding, and, and to be honest, I'm not actually a liturgical purist by any measure whatsoever. Even though we are technically still in Advent, we did in fact just read the birth story from Matthew's Gospel. So I think it is perfectly appropriate for us to wish one another Merry Christmas today. Uh, I mean, after all, we've been hearing about, we've been hearing Christmas songs since I think Halloween, and I think we have waited long enough. And that is exactly what we've been talking about. These past four weeks, we've been talking about the things that God simply will not wait for. We've lit candles each week to represent hope, peace, joy, and today being love. And in two days, we will light that center candle to represent Christ, the embodiment of all of those things. But before we jump all the way into Christmas, we have today to talk about God's impatient, persistent, and never waiting love. And though there are many things that could be said about God's love, and indeed have been said about God's love, I keep coming back to the words of our poet this morning, Sarah R., who said, quote, When people talk about love, rarely do they say, be brave. I wish they would. End quote. So today I want to start by saying, be brave. Have courage. We all know, maybe instinctually, we all know that courage is born of love. Why does a soldier throw himself on top of a grenade? Why would a person ever stand up to a bully? Why does a mother carry a child within herself for nine months? Love, love, and love. Courage is always born of love. You don't have to look further than the Christmas story to know that. Think of the courage of Mary and Joseph, who both put their lives on the line for the sake of this child, for the sake of love. A couple weeks ago in my Wednesday Words, I, I said that Mary is among the bravest figures in the entire Bible for facing what she faced. And Joseph, the focus of our gospel today, the stepfather, deserves some credit for his courage as well. His choice to 
raise a child that wasn't his own, to stand against biblical law for the sake of God's more righteous love, and to carry the load of fatherhood on his shoulders, that was an act of bravery. And those were very heart-wrenching decisions that Mary and Joseph had to make in real time. But those aren't uncommon decisions. Every day, somebody wakes up to find themselves unexpectedly expecting. And every day, there is a stepfather that chooses to raise, a lo- to raise in love a child that wasn't his own. But trusting in God, both Mary and Joseph take that leap of faith. That's courage born of love. That's the kind of quiet courage that happens every single day. It's the kind of courage that though it happens every day, you don't necessarily hear about it. I think about all of you, truly I do, I think about all of you who every day make courageous decisions. Decisions about what to do with your aging loved ones, parents and spouses, decisions about moving your family across the country, decisions, I I think that, that sometimes coming to church on a Sunday morning is an act of quiet bravery that we don't talk about very often. Now, I'll say my family, um, we've been getting over a a little bug that had been going around for a while. And one kid got sick, and then it was the other kid, and Kirsten and I, and it was a a rough couple weeks. But one of those nights, I had to bring Isaac to worship by myself, because Kirsten was home taking care of Aylin. Fortunately, Pastor Kathy was leading that worship, so I could just sit in the pew with my son Isaac and quietly sit and worship and enjoy a beautiful service. No, that didn't actually happen. (laughs) I mean, I did bring Isaac, but it was certainly uh, not easy or quiet. Um, Here I was, uh, sitting in worship, trying to enjoy this service while trying to wrangle one of my children. And every time I do this, every time I I have to sit in, in church, I am reminded it is really hard to sit in church and worship with your children. Now here I was at one service, just a half an hour service, not knowing what to do with my wiggly child. Kirsten, on the other hand, she is always prepared. Like she is prepared for the apocalypse, kind of prepared every time she comes to worship. And she has her bag with her that's stuffed with toys and snacks and backup toys and backup snacks. Of course, I forgot that bag. And so I was like checking on myself as I was sitting there with Isaac to see if I had something to entertain him with for a little bit. And all I had was my cell phone, which I gladly gave to him in a bad parenting moment. And then my cell phone died halfway through the service. So I wasn't doing great. It's, it's tough. And I say that to say that it does. It takes some courage to sit there with your kids wondering who is watching and all of you who do this each week are incredibly brave in my eyes now i will say this as a side note i am very proud of this congregation for how we treat children in our sanctuary and when i look out during my sermons and kirsten sitting there with isaac usually what i see is the person behind isaac playing peekaboo with her instead of listening to my sermon which i get a little jealous about But no matter how you spin it, no matter how you spin it, I do. I I think it takes courage to come here on a Sunday morning. Not just the parents, but all of us. Whether you're coming with a gaggle of kids or if you're still, maybe you're coming with a heavy heart and you're grieving the loss of a loved one. Or even if you're uncertain, if you're uncertain about faith, but needing a community to belong to and willing to wrestle with those questions. It takes courage. And these are the quiet, everyday decisions of courage that Mary and Joseph model for us. It's what Emmanuel, God with us, models for us. Jesus coming down not as a king or as a ruler with armies and power, 
But as a vulnerable little infant born to two vulnerable parents, that's the quiet courage of the manger. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't necessarily know what you need courage for today. But I know that you need it. And I know that it can't wait. Some days it is the simple courage just to wake up in the morning and to live another day in your grief. And other times it's the courage to hold a picket sign and to advocate for God's justice. And at times it might be that just coming to worship and allowing yourself to be vulnerable before God and before your brothers and sisters in Christ might be all the courage you can muster in a day. That is a gift that is given to you in the manger, God's courageous and vulnerable love. So let's not wait to love courageously. Let us not wait. I want to close with the words of Sarah R. because I, I loved that poem that we heard. I, I'd like to repeat some of it to you now. She wrote, to love is to pull the oxygen from your lungs and to say, here, take a breath. To love is to come out from hiding, to allow the light to shine on you. To love is to wear your heart outside of your body, fingers crossed that the holder handles it with care. To love is to trust that sometimes hurt and pain come with the territory but you're going to love anyway, so love anyway. Love like there's no tomorrow. Love as if love is not a scarcity. Love like Mary, who cradled a baby amidst the threat of being stoned. And love like Joseph, who took a child, who took a child in that he knew was not his own. This time I will allow you to say it, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen.